Hello everyone, this is Mr. Galvan here. We're going to be talking today about creating uh, sign-in sheets with uh, Google Forms. So Google Forms, very versatile application, and it's great whenever we need to have a tool to use to collect data, to collect information. Now, as you know, one of the most important um, areas or uh, places that we can collect data is our sign-in sheets, our visitor logs in the library. And I don't know about you, but I got sick and tired a while back of utilizing paper sign-ins. Because, I mean, it's it's time-consuming to navigate when we need to find a particular piece of information and to extract, extrapolate any sort of meaningful data or statistics, you would need to transfer everything to an Excel sheet. And with forms, it actually has a way for you to do this automatically. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and jump into the form. I'm gonna walk you through how to create it. And then we're gonna talk about how it populates into an Excel sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna close these. We're gonna to go to new. So uh, just before that, right now we're in our drive, right? So I'm gonna click on new, more forms and blank form, okay? So now we have our blank form up and ready to go, okay? So we wanna put a title. So the title of our form is gonna be sign in sheets. So let's go ahead and call it library visitors sign in sheets. So we have our title up. This is what we're gonna have the file name be whenever we um, type it in. Now, if you notice, we've already typed in the title here. If we just click on this, it's going to populate automatically. So that's going to be the file name in Google Drive for this particular form. We're going to add a description here. Um, just something, a message to the people that are filling out the form whenever they come to the library. Please fill out the form upon entering the library. Okay, so we have a set of questions here. Now, um, there's a couple of things to keep in mind when putting these questions in. Um, and I'm actually going to pause here and we're going to go into the settings. We have this little wheel, this little cog here. We're going to click on it. Now, this box is checked right now. Restrict to users in Brownsville, Independent School District, and Trusted Domains. I'm going to uncheck this box. And here's why. Because... Sometimes the people that come into the library aren't going to necessarily be just BISD students. Additionally, we don't want to have the students have to log into their Google accounts every single time that they come into the library. So instead, we're going to make this a little bit quicker, a little bit more seamless. So for that reason, the first two questions are going to involve the visitor's name. So we're going to do last name. Notice that Google recognizes what the question is, and it changes the type of answer response to short answer. The plus sign here adds a question. First name. Now, I want to go back real quick. Everybody see this? Required. We're going to go ahead and check that. We want to make sure that we have that checked because we don't want them skipping the question, submitting, and not having those answers in whenever they fill out the form. I also like getting the ID numbers for the students. It goes back to short answer again. We're going to make that required. Okay, another checkbox here. What is the purpose of your visit? Now, you could allow this to be a short answer if you want. We could do the short answer and they could just type out what they're going to do. But actually, I really feel like it helps to have options. It, it makes it go a little bit quicker when you have options for the kids to just click, click, click. So we could do maybe AR testing, uh, check out books, um, research on the computer. Pay a fine, look at the book fair, if you've got a book fair going on, that is. Um, you could also do lunch if the kid's just there for lunch. 
Um, it could be play games, read, etc. And you could also do testing or assignment from a teacher. Okay, and of course we could do the add other box. That way they can type in something if it's not on the list. Now this is just the start. You know, there might be special uh, particular things at your library that some of the kids maybe go to do. A uh, popular one oftentimes is the uh, makerspace. So we can actually even add that too. Use the makerspace. Okay. So we're going to make that required. We're going to add one more question. Which teacher sent you? because it's really helpful to know the teacher that sent the student. Um, that way, if, let's say for instance, uh, the kid writes down one teacher, but they actually came from another teacher, you can kind of go back and see, okay, actually, you know, the student said they came from here, but they're coming from here, so their story doesn't add up. So it's useful to have that as well. Don't forget, make the questions required. Okay, which teacher sent you? And, and that's it. You know, you could add a few more different types of uh, questions if you want to, but this is a good basic uh, form that we've got set. So let's review what we have. We have last name, first name, ID number, the purpose of the visit, which teacher sent you. And um, we could also say if you are coming during lunch, just type lunch. There we go. Okay. Now you might be wondering why I have a last name and a first name instead of just combining the two together. The reason I have it like this is because remember, this form is going to extrapolate data onto an Excel sheet, a Google sheet in this case, and you're going to have separate columns. I like having the separate column for the last name and the first name because we can filter and sort based on the information that we get. So if we go to the responses tab, there's this little green button, very important. Go ahead and click on it. And you're gonna see, it gives you an option, create a new spreadsheet, it has the title. Notice that it's the same title that we have for the form, but now it's gonna be for the Google Sheet. We go ahead and click on Create. And presto, we have our Google Sheet with the title. Notice it has responses in parentheses. We have a timestamp. This is the key to the visitor sign-in sheet. The timestamp will show the date and the time when the student or whatever visitor uh, came into the library and submitted the form. Remember I told you about the names? We have last name and first name. If we need to do any filtering and sorting, we could do it here. We've got data. data. We can create our filter. We can do our sorting. It's really easy to do. ID number and we have purpose. And you can sort by and filter by purpose too. Like if you want to see just how many kids came into the library to uh, AR test on a particular day, you can do the filter or you can do the, I'm sorry, you could click here, click on data and create a filter just for the AR testing if you want to. But since we don't have any data to work with right now, it's all blank. We can't really do that. But that's pretty much it. Really basic. We're going to go back to questions our sign-in sheet. Now, one more thing I want to show you on the send button. So if we want to, actually, I really the best way to go about this is to post this on a website, maybe your library website, click and open it on a computer and have it maybe on a laptop or an iPad at the entrance of your library. You can get the link for that form here by doing this. If you want to embed the HTML, sorry about that, if you want to embed the HTML, you can click on this and it'll get embedded onto the form or um, embedded onto your website. Like, let's say if you're using a Weebly site, if you're using a Google site, it's actually a lot easier. So that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed and uh, keep using Google Apps. They are fantastic.